Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing differentiation and its stationary points, which is a part of this section on calculus. We'll also be talking about exponential functions and logarithmic functions, which is part of this topic on algebra. The question goes, you are given a curve and its equation is given to be y equals to e to the power of 3x minus 5x squared plus ln 2x, where x is greater than 0. In part A of this question, you are to obtain an expression for dy over dx. And in part B of this question, you are to find the coordinates of this stationary point of the curve and leave your answer in its exact form. In the last part of this question, you are to determine the nature of this stationary point of the curve. You might want to pause this video to give this question a try and when you're ready, keep watching. In part A of this question, we are told to obtain an expression for dy over dx. Um, and dy over dx is the first order differentiation of y equals to e to the power of 3x minus 5x squared plus ln 2x. So we are told to differentiate e to the power of fx and that's a simple 2 marks question. Let us first revisit on our derivative of e to the power of fx function like this. So if we are to differentiate e to the power of fx in yellow, we are supposed to copy down the original e to the power of fx in yellow, multiply by the differentiation result of the power in this case which will give us the f prime of x so differentiate e to the power fx give us an e to the power fx multiplied by f prime of x which is the differentiation result of the power so with this in mind we can start our uh, part a of this question like this so our dy dx will copy down e to the power fx in yellow like this the original one multiply by the differentiation result of the power. So to differentiate the power, we can do a differentiation of in each individual terms. So differentiating 3x will give us a 3. Differentiate a negative 5x squared, bring down power, power minus 1 will give us a negative 10x. Differentiate ln 2x will actually give us a 2 over 2x. Now this 2 over 2x can be further simplified in our next step like this. So the 2 over 2x can be simplified into a 1 over x in the second parenthesis. And within the first bracket, um, over here, I can actually split out the e to the power of ln 2x because this e to the power of ln 2x, there is a formula we can actually simplify this part. Okay, so over here, um, the same base of e, if I want to split into two bases of e, I'll put a multiply in between. And at the same time, you will now be a ln 2x, e to the power of ln 2x. So um, let's go, let us go on to the logarithm special properties and how we derive or simplify e to the power of ln 2x like this. So for the logarithms, let e to the power of ln 2x be equals to y and we ln the left which will give us ln e to the power of ln 2x and we ln the right it should give us a ln y. Now using the power law of indices whereby we shift the ln 2x to the front becomes a ln 2x multiplied by ln e, which is actually the 1's. So the left hand side will be simplified into ln 2x and the right hand side ln y remains. Now removing the ln's on the left and on the right, 2x will therefore be equals to y, like this. So since e to the power of ln 2x is equals to y and y is equals to 2x, so we can conclude e to the power of ln 2x can be simplified into just a 2x. So with this thing, e to the power of ln 2x to be simplified into 2x, I'm going to change out e to the power of ln 2x to be just a 2x in the next step, like this. So we take out a 2x, we factor out our 2x like this, and uh, in the first bracket here, we have e to the power of 3x minus 5x squared. In the last bracket, we have this. So what happens is that this is an x, and there is a fraction of 1 over x in the last bracket, like this. So we will want to get rid of this fraction by multiplying the x like this. So if multiplying the x, we should get this answer. 2 will remain. If we multiply the x, we get a 3x. Multiply an x to the negative 10x should give us a negative 10x squared. Multiply an x to the 1 over x should remove the fraction, leaving us with a, just a plus 1. And that's the answer for part A of this question. For part B of this question, um, we are told to find the coordinates of this stationary point of the curve and leave the answer in its exact form for a 3 marks question. So by stationary point, 
we're referring to any of these three, the maximum, the minimum, or the inflections. So any of these three stationary points um, will give us a gradient to be equal to zero. So the tangent is actually a perfectly horizontal line where the gradient is equal to zero. So that is a characteristics of stationary points. So let us first talk about stationary points like this over here. So by stationary points, it means to say the gradient will be equal to zero. Uh, when gradient equals to zero, we are supposed to set dy over dx to be equal to zero. Our dy over dx is already simplified in the answer for part A. So we can proceed to the part B solution like this over here. So for, for part B solutions, setting a dy over dx to be equal to zero, that will mean to set the part A answer of this to be equal to zero like this. So we can set the two brackets to be equal to zero over here. So we know that the fact that e to the power of 3x minus 5x squared is an exponential function or e, e to the power of fx, it cannot be equal to zero because the the y equals to zero is an asymptote. It has to be greater in this case based on the graph. So this cannot be equal to the zero we will need to reject. That means to say we are only left with this bracket to be equal to zero. And what we do is we factorize giving us with this 2x minus one multiplied by 5x plus one to be equal to zero. So after which we can set the two terms to be equal to zero. X will therefore be equal to half or X to be equal to negative one over five. Notice that the question has a condition, which is x must be greater than zero. We will reject this part over here. And therefore, we are left with x to the power of x to be equal to half, replacing x to be equal to half into this original y equations. We will have y to be equal to e to the power of a quarter in its exact form as required in the question for part b. So writing in coordinates form will give us this answer. Coordinates of the stationary point is 0 0.5 comma e to the power of a quarter. And that's the answer for part B. Moving on to the last part of this question in part C, we are to determine the nature of this stationary point that was previously found in our part B. And by the nature of this stationary point, we are referring to either a maximum, a minimum, or a point of inflection. And all of this tree can be found by using the first order derivative test. Um, and the second derivative test will allow us to only determine the maximum or minimum. The point of inflection could not be determined by the second derivative test. So whether to use the first derivative test or second derivative, derivative test for your part C questions, um, I will advise my students to look at the first order differentiation like this. And in this case, I consider this differentiation to be slightly complicated, um, although you can still proceed to do the second derivative test by differentiating one more time. Um, I wouldn't recommend to do so because um, it will mean there is a higher tendency of making mistakes if you have to substitute the value of 0 0.5 for our second derivative test later on. So by that, um, I will be using the first derivative test. So let us go through the first derivative test for this question here. So you have to prepare a four by three table like this for first derivative test. In the first row, you have to write down x to be 0 0.5 minus, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5 plus. So by 0 0.5 minus, I'm referring to any points of x that is before 0 0.5. It could be 0, could be 0 0.1, could be 0 0.2. And 0 0.5 is because it has a stationary point of 0 0.5, x to be 0 0.5. Now 0 0.5 plus is similarly, it's the same thing, whereby I will use any points of x that is after 0 0.5. You can use one, in fact. So over here, so we know that our x, when x is a 0 0.5, uh, when x is a 0 0.5, that is our stationary point, our dy dx was equal to zero. So we can proceed to writing this, dy dx to be equal to zero. So when dy dx is equal to zero, the shape of the tangents um, is perfectly horizontal like this. So we just draw a line like this. So what happens if um, I want to test this part out 0 0.5 minus. So maybe I want to sub a value of, let's say for example, 0. 0 is a very nice number to sub in. So I'm going to sub in a 0 into your dy dx like this. So what happens when you sub in a 0, x to be a 0 into your dy dx, your dy dx will give us an answer of a positive value 
which you are not required to show the answer of what you substitute. So just say as a dy dx to be a positive, and when gradient or dy dx is a positive, the shape of the tangent is an upward sloping like this. And similarly, for our 0 0.5 plus in the last column, we can sub an x value to be a 1, for example. So if I sub my x to be a 1 into your dy dx like this, all right, we can determine whether our dy dx is a positive or is it a negative. And um, of course, in this case, the answer will give us a negative, so it's less than 0. So when dy dx is less than 0, gradient is less than 0. When gradient is less than 0, it implies that this is a downward sloping sketch of tangents. So essentially what does this mean is that as you can see the shape or sketch of tangent tells us that this is actually a maximum curve. So going on to the next part here, um, what does this mean? You are not required to sketch this um, y curve out, uh, but in order for us to understand the sketch of this tangent and the first derivative test, I have sketched it out for all of you here. So this sketch or this curve represents y equals e to the power of 3x minus 5x squared plus ln 2x. This point here, as you can see, is a maximum point. It's a stationary point. At this point, your dy dx is actually equal to 0. Any points that is before this point, it is a, the shape of the tangents is actually a positive. Any part of this curve, your dy dx is, is actually greater than 0 like this. So over here, so if x is to be a 0 0.5, your dy dx is a 0. So any point could be 0 0.4, x to be 0 0.3, x to be 0, for example, that we use. Um, we found that dy dx is a positive. So we're using this first derivative test in its meaning like this. So let's say if you want to move to the right of this stationary point, let's say we want to use a x to be a 1. As you can see, any point beyond this x to be a half is actually downward sloping all the way. So let's say we use x to be a 1 like this, we test it out, or dy dx is negative, it just simply means like this. So any point here, any parts here, is actually downward sloping, dy dx is less than 0. And of course, we can tell that this is actually a maximum curve. It can also be found from a sketch of tangent, a maximum curve like this. So we can conclude the nature of the stationary point of half comma e to the power of a quarter is indeed a maximum point. And that's the answer for this whole question. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.